what 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 was your ad revenue like do you do you care sharing are you allowed to say uh you go first welcome back we got another dex and dara podcast how you doing dexter we got a lot to go over this week yeah yeah we both just got back from some extensive travel right but uh i'm i'm i'm, I'm excited some were there longer than others you know you show up for what like 16 hours and i'm there for a full i don't know like five days it was a lot but uh <laughs> i had a really good time i don't know about you uh if anyone doesn't know we were at twitchcon yeah yeah What'd i got think? to meet Dragon. it was great um but i had to go home and play spider-man 2 you know did you immediately just start playing spider-man 2 when you got home no i went to sleep and then <laughs> And then uh, I streamed Marvel Snap, and then I played a little bit of Spider-Man 2, but only like three or four hours. I'll, I'll do more later. Yeah, I have not played it yet. I don't have a PlayStation 5, so how do I play it if I don't have one of those? Do I have to get it? You need a PlayStation so to... 5. Yeah. I don't think there's a way to well, emulate it. it, and even though that would be against the rules. Yeah, Whew, don't do that. Don't do that. Um, I, I think I might get a PS5 just to try it out because it looks so fun and it actually includes where I live now in Brooklyn. So it'd be cool to s explore, you know? Yeah. Or you could just watch me play it live on twitch.television slash Dexter. I could do that too. You know, maybe I will. I heard you might be streaming it later. So maybe I'll check it out. <laughs> yeah. Dexter live. And by later, I mean yesterday for anyone watching this. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, You'll, you'll stream it more. I'm sure you're going to stream the whole game because yeah. you finish games, unlike me, who uh, starts a game on stream and then never comes back to it ever again. It's uh, fun. I, I might get better at that. Yeah, you should. It's, it's fun. fun. It's a good time. How much have you streamed it so far? Any? Uh, Spider-Man? Yeah, Spider-Man 2. Yeah, like four, four hours. Um, okay. I think the game's around like 20, maybe. I'm not sure. So... But I streamed yeah, the not... entirety of the previous two Spider-Man games, the original and then Miles I... Morales, but uh, yeah. Which was better? I personally enjoyed Miles more, but it was short. So I think if you were to only play one and you're worried about value, it'd probably be the OG. All right. Well, this week we had a new card come out, Nico. I don't think you've tried it yet, have you? It's a... Uh... It's a very interesting car with a lot of different effects. I don't know if you've had a chance to take a look at Nico yet. I have I've... not. I have not uh, played Nico yet. I watched a little bit of people, streamers, you know, Dara streamed some some Nico. I, I was busy all yesterday with, uh, with sponsored stuff, but I'm going to try it today. Yeah, so Nico, if you guys didn't know, one, two... Uh, it's got a, after you play your next card, something happens to Nico or that card, or just like something happens, I guess. So after you play your next card, an effect happens. It's an on reveal, so you just have to play Nico, then play another card, and then that's when the effect happens. So it has seven different effects. It's it becomes a demon, meaning the next card becomes a demon, or you destroy your next card and draw two cards, or you move it to one location to the right, so the opposite of Iron Fist, or you give it plus two, so it's basically Forge, or you place that cards location so it's basically scarlet witch and then you add a copy of it to your hand which is kind of a unique uh ability it's kind of like cloning vats uh and then double this card's power so this card's power meaning it'll double nico's power not the card he played oh. so that's a little bit different so it's not a cheap shuri it's just like nico will become a one four or if you'd buff nico it becomes like a one eight if you had forged it or something so it is pretty interesting because actually making a card a demon really good. Uh, just like if you are playing Thanos or something, all of your stones are now one, like they could be a one six if you play Nico before it. So it's kind of crazy. Uh, like destroying it and drawing two cards is actually huge. Like especially in a destroy deck where you want to destroy things, you just basically get two extra free uh, draws on top of destroying a card you want to destroy like Deadpool or something. Really yeah. good. Move decks, obviously a move thing would be good. Giving it plus two. There are so many decks that can just use plus two on cards really strong. And then I, I felt like the replacing the card's location was like the least useful. But like, because it's like, when do you randomly want to have Nico pop up and be replaced at card's location and then have it actually be a location you want to replace? It's more rare of a situation that that's going to happen. 
and then adding a copy of it to your hand. Really good effect. I think that one's really good, especially if you have like something like Venom or Hulkbuster, which you're attaching it, and then you get a bigger card. So it's really cool with that. And then doubling this card's power, that just makes Nico like a 1-4 or a 1-8 if you buffed it. It's just like uh, one cost that's four power is premium stats. So I and think these are all pretty good. These These all cycle each turn? Like it'll change if you don't play? Yeah, so in your hand, it just will go through each of these. So if you don't like, like one, Snow you can just wait till the next turn. Yeah, yeah, like old Snow Guard. But it's, since all of these are all pretty good, I would say it's not as bad as old Snow Guard because like Snow Guard was like, obviously the Hawk and the Bear have like very different power levels of which one you want to be using because Hawk is usually pretty useful and Bear is very, very situational. So I would say that this feels much more consistent than old snow guard in that there's something that you're going to want to use especially if you're using a deck that can use most of them so like destroy decks can use like four of these at least like you can use it for the draw two the plus two the copy a card even just like the doubling or the demon are just good stats so it's like everything but the move and the other card and then you can play it in phoenix force and then the move becomes useful as well so destroying uh. and move so it's just like there, there's uh, almost always something that you can do with it. Yeah, my, my first thought would be to try it in a bounce deck because I feel like all these effects are good, but I'm looking at the stats for it. Most people are just playing it in like Thanos or a Loki deck or just a Null Destroy. Yeah, so Thanos I think is going to be one of the most popular with this deck, with this because it's just like affecting, since it's at the next card that you play, just stones are going to be really good with it in general. But I do think... Uh, bounce might be really good as well. I think from the decks that I saw with Nico, Bounce looked like one of the strongest for sure. I don't know. You said the stats didn't say that though. Let's take a look real um, quick. Yeah. So I just searched for Nico and I sorted to 100 plus and then I sorted by win rate. Yeah. Uh, this way there's funny. no bots. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like what? what is this? Yeah. Deck? This first it's... deck I think is not real. Yeah, it looks. I don't know what happened here. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> uh, Loki, obviously good. Loki, Elsa. I think this is just. Here's the problem with. Uh, I think new cards that come out is like a lot of times you just slot them into the best decks in the game, and then they're good. Yeah. So, it looks like Loki, but Bounce is the fourth best one. So. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, the average cube rate on it is pretty awful. But yeah. it's like a high win rate, so maybe people are just snapping wrong. If we sort by cube rate, do we get a different story? Thanos, Death, Loki, yeah. Yeah. High yeah, high win rates could be just like people end up getting scammed. Get like I think one problem with bounce in general is that like you can end up if you end up against someone who's running like Killmonger or something, I feel like you might end up just getting like eight cubed. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. If you have priority and they kill Monger last turn. Or, well, you don't even, in today's world, at least in the meta that I've been playing, a lot of people are playing Invisible Woman now. I think uh, Cleanup has like changed the meta a bit where a lot of people are running Invisible Woman. And you just put Killmonger behind Invisible Woman so you don't even need priority dodging anymore. It's just, yeah. uh, you just throw it out there and bam, you're done. Back in my day, I also did that, you know, before Twitch Rivals. Won. Yeah. Yeah. Invisible Woman Killmonger. Now You're it's... the original innovator. No, I stole it from Moyen, but <laughs> I think Moyen's yeah. the original innovator. Yeah, Moyen. I just like every single deck that Cleanup plays is Invisible Woman something. So it's crazy to me because it's really smart because you just can play any deck you want and you just if you get invisible woman out early you have no idea what you're playing against because it could just be any one of their decks right yeah i should probably start doing that a little more often i think we talked about this it's last fun. time too it's one of my favorite did, cards i just don't use it enough still it's crazy i i still like it a lot um, yeah. but yeah, i think nico gonna be part of the meta for a, a while to come because i think it's just a strong premium card can you I click told on nico cozy yesterday Eight out of ten. What do you think? Oh, click click on Nico real quick. Can we click on her? You want to see the actual stats? Yeah. Huh. Positive. Um. So I haven't played with Nico yet, but I I would have guessed like a seven out of ten. That's what Cozy said. Um. But 
I I think it's stronger than people are leading on like like from what they're experimenting with so far. I think it's that's my own take, but it's just like I think it's premium stats, premium abilities. It's similar to like the Thanos stones when they first came out. People thought they were worse than they were, and then as they played with them more, they became better and better and better. That's fair. I, I think, think the same. I I'm just scared of uh all the variants that the card has like sometimes it's going to be the perfect thing you need and sometimes it's just going to be okay uh sometimes yeah. it's going to be bad right so i don't know i, I think I, they're i, I want to mess around with it and bounce deck and maybe i'll like it but we'll see yeah i think i actually think it might be best in thanos right now from what i've been looking into i haven't played thanos with it yet so i'll have to try it out but i think it is just going to be one of those cards that like like you said, it's going to have a little bit of variance, but I think when you get the perfect one, it'll be like a 10 out of 10 card. And then when you don't get it, it'll be like a 6 out of 10 at the worst, I think. So it's just like that combination of like you'll have the perfect and it'll be so good. It'll be kind of crazy. Yeah, I think it's probably going to ultimately just be a Thanos card as well um, or a bounce card. But yeah, just being able to like eat a stone and draw or turn a stone into a demon is really good. And that's kind of the same reason I wanted to run it in bounce. But I think Thanos is just such a good deck. Like I climbed so many ranks with Thanos. Uh, I recently put a video out on Thanos as well. Um, I might just slot Nico into that. That's probably the way to go. Yeah. Yeah. And Thanos historically has a lot of extra card like slots that you can put into the deck because you already have like extra cards that you just throw in for low cost so you can really mix and match yeah. in that deck, I think. Yeah. Should be pretty easy. But yeah, I think Nico gonna be a good card. Next card coming out next week. Have you I think this is the one I was most excited for this season. And it turns out that there were already some good cards like Elsa. But I think Werewolf by Night gonna be a kind of a crazy card, I think. What do you think? I'm excited about this one. I think it it, it hurts my brain a little bit like as to what deck it's actually gonna find a home in. Um, cause it might just be, if you have like three or four on reveals, consider werewolf by night, or you might try and build a deck around it, but I don't think, I don't think it's going to be like a movement deck card. I could be wrong. I, I don't think it'll be move. Wait, does it count as moving? Actually, that's kind of insane. Actually. It is yeah. Like with there. Craven, like he technically works with Craven. Oh, wow. I didn't even think about that. Uh, I didn't realize it was going to be move. I, I was thinking when it says move there, I was just thinking like. I, I didn't even think about that. Oh, wow. Actually, that's going to be crazy. Yeah. So does this strength and move this archetypes? Might... Does it just go in on reveal decks? Um, because Spider-Man? I, yeah. Like, I think this is very easily a 3-5. Uh, oh, easily. A 3-7 consistently. A 3-9 sometimes, right? Elsa's so good because she's a 2-5. A and very easily like a, a two eight and then a two eleven. I think I'm getting those yeah, numbers well, right. But well, but I get think to the OTA. Elsa won't be that when this is released. So oh, <laughs> in well. this episode, but uh, there there will be some things. But yeah, Werewolf by Night. I think actually, just as we we're talking about Thanos, if you remember, each of the stones are on reveals. Most of them. Most of yeah, them. yeah. So All but two. it just goes in a Thanos deck. Thanos gets stronger. Yep. I think this will be good with Thanos. I think it'll be good maybe with some other on reveal decks, but you could like ignore the move part of it. I think it's just throw it in an on reveal deck and have it flip around a bit. But in like the Wong on reveals, you want to be playing a lot of your on reveals all in one spot. So maybe not. But I do think this has a lot of potential to become, like you said, like a three, seven, three, nine. Yeah, I think, would be good. I think this could even go in a bounce deck as well, because you have so many cheap cards that have on reveal generally. That's why you want to bounce them. So like having True. this on the board, throwing some cards out, beasting them last turn, you know, just throw things around, play even like a hit monkey or something could be cool. Yeah, that's a good idea, actually. I'd but also try that as well. Board space is limited, right? So if you want this guy to get benefit, you can't have more than two cards on a lane because your third card will be the on reveal and then he's going to move. So it's a little bit awkward, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, you move him three times, you're happy, so. Yeah. Yeah. I think that'll happen like over half the games you play them because you're building a deck that's meant for that to happen. So yeah. we'll see though. Yeah. Might try it in, uh, I think you also put this in like Clog. Clog runs a lot of on reveals and you're not putting cards on your side. So like goblins and other things like that. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. 
That'd be fun. That's a good idea. I think I like that one. Yeah, I've been playing a lot of clogs, so I've uh, I've been, I, it's always on top of my mind. Like a, like some uh, viper goblin stuff. Yeah, yeah. Don't accidentally viper over the werewolf. Yeah, I don't think you'd want this with like debris. I mean, you could debris, but there there is a new card coming out in the future that'll be really good with debris in this. I think uh, that oh nihilus uh, or whatever his name is. Yeah, I forget the name. I think it's an Nihilus. Uh, I pushes all of the zero power cards, I think, over to the other side. So, yeah, I think a Nihilus and Sentry. Yeah, that's going to be fun. But I don't know if you Wait, run Nihilus werewolf. pushes less than zero. Wait, is so it, does it push? I thought it was zero or thing? less. Is it only less than that's zero? Not, that'd be kind of crazy. Wait a second. I didn't even think about Sentry. This card is insane. All right, well, this when does this come out? I don't know when it comes out. Oh, wait, it comes out at the I end of I think it's next November. month, isn't it? Yeah, oh, so this man. is like uh, if you play Debris into Sentry into Annihilus, you just clog their whole board. Because it doesn't swap on both sides. It's only your side goes over there. Um, yeah, this might be my favorite card that is coming up. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, I think this is, uh, is going to open Clutter. And people are going to be upset. But then you just run destroy, right? You just carnage your lane or whatever. Yeah. So, or death lock and stuff like that. So, Oh, boy. Yeah, so... And great of, stats. Really good stats. 5-8. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of good stats, they did just change a couple cards, getting some good stats in the OTA. So if you're listening to this, OTA just happened probably because we wouldn't release it before it happened. Uh, but... Two cards got buffed. We'll talk about those first real quick before we get into the spicy cards. Uh, Halcow is going from a 4-6 to a 4-8. Whoa! Which I think is pretty big. I, I, that's that's going to be premium stats. So wait, it's just wait, like wait. a 4-8. Yeah. No, any other changes? Just a 4-8. So, like it's not just changing the... Wow. Oh my I'm god. Sure. Let me double check. I don't uh, know if you can show this. Yeah, just a 4-8. Just a <laughs> yeah, I, I won't. I'll cut that out. Yeah, cut that out. <laughs> Okay, wow. <laughs> you guys won't, you won't see that. All right, uh, four eight. Yeah, so Halcow originally was a two six, was super premium stats. Then, then it went to a four six, and then it was like kind of just like an okay card for a while. Now at a four eight, premium stats again. I think it'll be highly played again at four eight. It's a Modoc that costs one less. <laughs> if you're good <laughs> yeah. enough, you just hit the right cards. Yeah, this would be great in like Apoch lists, or I might even try like bringing strong guy back with this i used to run like a you know this in a strong guy deck but Ooh, strong guy still bad i think i think oh, i think strong guy still needs to get some love for it to be playable yeah you're probably well, maybe right. I'm, I'm coping right now <laughs> your first law was well how can i get the least played card in, in a deck yes um, yeah but yeah how cow how can we play but also they they gave two stats to this. They also gave two stats to Spectrum. So Spectrum's going to 6-7. Wow. Yeah. That's good. I think it'll be very good. Out of 6-7, I think it'll be uh, very playable again. Yeah, definitely. Again, I mean, like, it never really was, but I mean, it kind of was. There was a time when there was like Destroyer the Spectrum decks going around. Ongoing Destroyer uh, days. Those were, that was like a year ago. Yeah, but wow. I think this might bring it. People have been like, Testing out some Spectrum decks, but Spectrum was like always the worst card of the deck that you almost never played, I feel like. And this... now I think you, you might play it out because two extra stats, pretty good. Yeah, there's just another Thanos card now, but I like it a lot. It's, uh, I had an ongoing deck that was pretty good. I think you were messing with one as well, like a Jean Grey sort of deck where you, I don't know. You... Yeah, that wasn't really ongoing, but yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was a Jean Grey deck. It was, it was a wave deck. But yeah. Uh, yeah, mine was mine was kind of an ongoing deck. Like you could X Elaine, you could Gene Gray Elaine. Uh also your finishers, your six drops would be Orca or Spectrum, so your opponent doesn't know what you're getting. Or you could do Onslaught and Spectrum. Maybe you, you claw Onslaught, or maybe you claw Spectrum. People don't know what's happening. I think it's gonna be good. I'm excited to mess around with this. Yeah, I I like that archetype a lot, so I think it'll be fun. Yeah. And but uh, next up, they did a, the smallest tweak, I think, of the um, OTA was Sauron. They're making it a 3-2. They just said it's been a strong card for a long time. It's been the top of like the individual cards for a long time. Like when they just look at individual cards, how strong they are. 
and the deck has always been like in top five or top 10 if it at the very worst so they're like hey we'll just tweak it a little bit which i'm kind of okay with but at the same time i think it's one of those things that like if if the general community doesn't notice it and it's just not not that much i really don't think that it needs to be tweaked because i don't think it feels too strong and i don't think the stats even though they say it's like the top card i think there's like like it's just a strong individual card within the deck like and it just that doesn't mean that it and it's just only played in one deck so it's like it's gonna look stronger than cards that are more versatile so i don't think it necessarily warrants a nerf but they did it anyway but we'll see how it plays out i don't think yeah, it really too much. I, you, you can't see my face right now but i've just been kind of puzzled i mean it makes sense that you know when drawn it's a 60 percent win rate which is the number one card when played it's a 62 percent win rate which is the number 10 card and it is very good when you draw it in that deck but i don't think this card's power is really gonna affect it at all i think it's just the effect but it's just a shuri it's just a shuri deck yeah, it's just the fact that it's only played in Shuri with only the ongoing bad cards. And it's just like, it's one deck. So it's like, it's going to look stronger than if it was played in like 10 different decks, like a lot of cards are. And it's just like, it's played in one strong deck. The deck itself is strong. So it's like, this I don't think will affect the win rate of the deck no. by much at all. Similar to like the Shuri change they did last time where they made it a 4 1. I also don't think that's going to change the Shuri yeah, so much at all. The way you ruin this card is by nerfing Red Skull or something. So, yeah. Yeah. We'll see how this plays out. I don't think it'll do much. I think a really good change that they did finally after many, many months of this card being too strong. They're making Angela a 2 2 and having it only give plus one power per card. No. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, shit, dude. I really like. I Angela. mean, it still it still goes up to a two six. Uh, if you or I guess it's a two five now. If you play three cards on it, so actually it is it is slightly worse. Um, if you play three cards, and obviously if you're stacking too many cards, which I think this card was too good with Kitty Pride and with uh like just the move stuff in general. I think. Yep, Kitty killed like, this. Kitty killed it. So um, I do think that this will bring it down into a reasonable place. Oh man, I really liked Angela. Okay, this sucks. I don't know. I think Angela is very. She is probably overplayed. Yeah, but she's uh she's such a fun card to me, and I feel like also if you're a good at at the game, you know, like uh, you wouldn't get her over eight power because your opponent would be able to Shang Chi her or something like that. I think it was a little skill testing in that sense. Uh, she was kind of the core of a bounce deck, and I, she probably still will be, but a lot a lot worse and i mean she dies she dies to shadow king i was gonna say now at 2-2 though to start she doesn't die as much to shadow king because she yeah. starts with some power oh. so i think it makes her a little bit better against some things i actually had cut her from a lot of my decks because she was so easily countered by like shadow king and other cards oh. that i just like i wanted to get rid of that variability it also forces you to play in one lane so your opponent knows where you're gonna play a lot of times so I think this makes her I don't I don't even know if the change will make her more or less cuttable because it's like she's going to be less susceptible to problems but she's also going to be like a 2-4 sometimes which is like not the best not the worst it's just like like I think you can play around on the last turn a little bit easier as a 2-2 you know so it's like I, I also I think it's, Elsa's the problem not Angela a little bit well speaking of Elsa Elsa also getting changed. Elsa going from a 2-2 to a 2-2, but only plus two power. So okay. I saw this change coming a mile away, actually. Like yeah. as I was playing Elsa, I kept thinking in my brain, oh, it's gonna get plus two power because like that would make sense to me. But it was plus three, which is insane. Like, cause I it's just like way too much power to give, I feel like, for it's, an effect like Elsa. It's such an easy effect to activate. I was like, why are they giving a 2-5? Like, Lizard's a 2-5, but he has such a huge downside. Yeah. Uh, Medusa's a 2-5, but you have to play her middle. Uh, um, Elsa... And you can only activate those, like, once for... Yeah. <laughs> those yeah, things. so Elsa's so good. She was very easily a 2-8, very easily a 2-11. So I, I, very easily a two fourteen, honestly. Like yeah. I like most games with Elsa, I was activating it four times, like minimum. I think. Yeah, like so playing her in like, the last card, Spider Man. Then playing Jeff and moving Jeff, or playing Vision and moving Vision. It was just she was way too good. 
Uh, I had her in pretty much every single deck I ran because activating her once makes her worth it. Activating her twice, yep. insane value. So uh, now one activation makes her two four, two makes her two six. She's still very good. I think this still uh, very good. This is this is proper, and she might need to be a two one honestly. Yeah, I think at the plus two power, she'll still be in a lot of decks, but I think they'll be. You can't just like splash her into like every deck now. I think you can now do it in decks that can take advantage of Elsa. Where before I was literally just putting it in every deck. Yeah, Which I think a, a two one plus two is where she will feel normal. I think she's still going to be strong at a two two plus two. But I'm glad I'm yeah. glad this one's happening because she is just everywhere. Yeah, and then. The last big change that happened, two cards kind of got affected because of this, was to Loki. So Loki is going to a 4-5. So wow. that's, I think, the biggest change of this because it's not just a power change. I think changing energy costs actually changes the most about things because it's going to just change the curve of this card a lot. I think a 4-5 is significantly bringing him down. So we'll have to see how this plays out, but... As someone who's maybe played like probably top five player in the world who's played the most Loki, I think this will hurt him the a lot. Like I I don't know. It's, yeah, I, uh, I think um generally one one power or one energy is worth like two, two point five power. So this is yeah. uh this is a big deal. But you slow him down. I mean, you've played a lot more Loki than me. I think generally the nut was just like you collector, even though I know people are dropping collector now. Uh, and then you play Loki on three. Like the sooner you get him out, I feel like the better. Um, yeah. Or on turn Snow four, you like Snow Guard Loki, um, and you can't do that anymore. Yep. So yeah, it's significantly worse. I might stop playing Loki after this change. Oh, we'll see. <laughs> I'm sick of you playing perfect. Loki. Finally. <laughs> Finally, everyone will be happy. I actually am really happy for this change because I don't want to have to like only face a bunch of Loki mirrors at like the top end of the ladder it's just like it would turned into mostly that even yesterday i was facing mostly loki when nico came out i was trying to play nico decks i just kept getting lokied every single game yeah uh, which, anytime which kind of i'm a decent rank you know i'm top 200 yeah, anytime you, i play something i thought you got top, to 100 you, you're up there i'm like 120 right now i probably decayed but anytime i play someone in top 10 it's a loki deck yep every time that's what it seems like yeah that's just how you get to top 10 right now is just playing loki like, i can't I, there's maybe I'm like two die. people that aren't playing loki in the top 10 it's crazy yeah it's too strong but this is great this is great for the game i think i they finally like last time they were like uh loki isn't that strong they were saying it's just like they they're like it the stats don't really support it and now i think this nerf hits the right number to bring it down i think i I, I personally wanted to get rid of the minus one cost but yeah i'm scared of um i think after this thanos is just going to be the main bad guy thanos is uh but yeah with but they did bring back collector so if you didn't know they they're giving collector back two power so it's going to a two two. Oh, that's so good. since they hurt loki they're bringing back collector a little bit which i think is fine because i cut collector yeah everyone was, they nerfed collector because of loki everyone stopped right. running collector uh and now they're nerfing loki a deck that collector is no longer in so maybe uh maybe he'll go back in these loki decks which aren't going to be top tier anymore i don't think or maybe i could finally play him back in my helicarrier deck maybe <laughs> helicarrier deck yeah i uh i think that's it for the oh no wait uatu i didn't even put that in here uatu is going to want to i don't think that matters but um yeah. uh, i think uatu is still gonna be unplayable just all right away. unplayable at a one two but nico's premium stats at a one two well nico is like a one four stats i think Uatu mostly. should be able to see all the locations i feel like that's not a huge ask i really don't think so either because you see the first one the first turn anyway so it's just adding one more location you see which is just not that much i feel like they must have tested uh, that and they were like nah dude this is way too good <laughs> I, I i don't know maybe they just i think the big thing is i don't think it's that it's way too good it just changes the like gameplay patterns of the game too much so they don't want people like i still don't even think if it's all locations you'd include it is a thing like i don't think it's enough information it's the same thing with the duck i really don't think seeing your next card is enough information for you to want to include it over another card in your deck 
when you have such limited deck space in a game like Snap with only 12 cards. Yeah. It's just not enough. And it's same true. locations, you'll see them next turn, you know? You don't have to play there now. And there aren't many locations that, like, having the one turn or two turn knowledge beforehand would really help you. There's obviously a few, but it's like, not that I, many. I don't think there's enough restrictive location like sanctum sanctorium people are playing a lot of move decks and jeff so like it doesn't really matter if you're playing a destroy yeah. deck though and you see i don't know that it's greatly beneficial to you but why would you put watu in a destroy deck a deck that already struggles i think to cut cards because it feels so tight yeah. at 12. exactly no. yeah you, you can't there it had to be a deck like thanos that and i don't even thanos already has the reality stone and change locations that you don't want or need or something so right yeah i don't know but yeah that's it for uh the ota what do you think of this i think this will shake up the metagame a ton this is this seems like the biggest ota in months huge ota like i could experiment on any individual change here and there's gonna there's like well, a lot of seven i don't know there's a lot of changes hellcow spectrum big changes new decks that are gonna uh -huh. be strong mm -hmm. loki elsa getting nerfed just huge changes and then angela just getting slightly tweaked i think that'll be huge yeah i can't help but feel like thanos is gonna be the number one big bad guy um just me like public like enemy number thanos. one no i love <laughs> thanos uh a little too much lately i just think he's too strong and he's kind of somehow slipped under the radar and after this it's gonna be very apparent that thanos is the best and i think how do you how do you nerf thanos you make one more stone not draw do you think that they saw this coming that it was going to be back in the meta game? Um, I don't know. I think they're a little late. They go on old data, but yeah, so yeah it'll, it'll take too. a few months for them to nerf Thanos, maybe. But I think what they do is like remove the draw from Time Stone or something. Um, yeah, and that'll really hurt Thanos because I've been playing a lot of it and getting rid of that. Like, you really want to play Time Stone on three generally. Um, yep. and if that doesn't draw, it, it greatly hurts the deck. Um, that would be a huge nerf, I think, to Thanos. Um, I think that Time Stone is like one of the most uh, key parts of the deck in the current version of it. Because it's running like most versions of the deck that I see now are like five drop heavy decks that run both Psylocke and Time Stone to be able to get out that five drop a turn early. Yeah. And if you remove that draw, you're really limiting your option of what five drop you're going to be playing out. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's also my game plan generally. So I think that's that's the way to do it. But I'm just uh, trying to predict the future, you know? Okay. That's we'll, we'll see. Maybe Thanos ends up sucking. Maybe. Because uh, Elsa nerf indirectly hurts him. <laughs> because Elsa nerf. W what have you thought about the uh, Twitch drops? Did you get your Shocker variant? I did, yeah. I am so happy to get this variant that nobody's going to use. I... Yeah, I kind of <laughs> wish it was a better card, but uh, it is cool that they're doing twist drops again. Yeah, but... I, uh, I I greatly benefit from twist drops because of viewership bump. Um, so I'm very grateful for that. I do think it could have been a cooler variant, but it's also hard to complain about free things. Are you surprised with how many people you got watching based on what the rewards were or do you think people just didn't even know what the rewards rewards were and they just came and watched because they heard drops free stuff um i think people just came because drops free stuff and i honestly don't even know if people care about the variant as much as the free credits 500 yeah, credits is it's a lot yeah that's your weekly like mission credits right like when you finish your 25 weekly challenges you get 500 credits so just getting that for just AFKing in a Twitch stream. I think you actually get a lot of not AFK people though. Like you, you would know the best out of anyone. I think of new players coming in and watching your stream and like maybe seeing Twitch for the first time and then sticking around. Do you see that? Yeah, I feel like I've gotten a lot of first time chatters because you could see when you're streaming if it's a, their their first message, you know. Uh, so I got a lot of those. A lot of people saying like, "Hey, uh, I love Snap, but this is like my first time to Twitch." Or a lot of people just starting to play snap like this is my like i'm new to snap what should i do you know and so it's nice to see all that i do think these twitch drop promotions are great for bringing in new viewers uh as well as bringing people to twitch which kind of helps the content creators 
Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm happy. I hope they keep doing them. I also, what, what do you think, what cadence do you think would be good for Twitch drops? I feel like I would like them to be like, like seasonal, I think, uh, or like holiday specific, like a, like a happy holiday, like a Christmas one, you know, not like a Santa Claus Thanos or something, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Or the like holidays. A, so you want like anniversary, which we just had. And then you want like the holiday season. You want like December. Yeah, but not every holiday. I think it's a, if it's every month, it kind of loses its uh, pizzazz, its specialness. Does um, it though? Do you? Do why you do you think it would lose? It? I, so I, I'm just like speculating here, but it's just like if people see free stuff, would it lose pizzazz if people were like okay, free stuff? Like as long as they're not like making it so the free stuff is worthless. Like if they're not giving away like ten thousand credits and then they're like, oh, I have all the credits I need. If they need the credits. Or they need a, a exclusive variant. People are going to come back regardless of how frequent it is. Like if they did it weekly and they made it something worthwhile getting every week, like you do your missions every week, right? For Snap, like you're gonna want to do that. And if your mission just became watch Twitch as well, wouldn't you also do that? Yeah, I'm not saying I they should like, do it weekly, but I feel like if they did it monthly, for example, um. The viewership would still be higher as like a baseline, but I think it'll pump a little lower. So the first Twitch drops that happened, I peaked at 30k. Mm -hmm. The second Twitch drops, I peaked at 14. So I think if they did it monthly, I would peak at like eight, which is fine. I like it. I, I think I would... part of that is also the rewards, though, that happened with it. Like it peaked lower. I thought it would be even lower than that honestly because the rewards seem considerably worse than last time yeah i opinion. uh i agree i i totally expected this one to be like i would peak at like three or four k so i was really blown away by the amount of people that came out um so yeah. maybe i i think a lot of people play snap and just a lot of people yeah don't actually watch it on twitch um yeah. so when there's drops all of a sudden they come here like they might be twitch watchers but they don't watch snap twitch if that makes sense they're they're watching like hot tubs and stuff like that but when they see this is happening they're like oh okay you know so they jump over i i wouldn't mind once a month you know i i, I really I wouldn't mind once a but month. i feel like i'm asking too much of them because they they do like money they are very money hungry they do like money they do and like they, money <laughs> they don't like giving away uh free things as you can tell yeah. this shocker variant but that's why I'm like, oh, yeah. if it was a if it was a a Christmas one, you know, I know not not everyone celebrates Christmas, so they probably wouldn't go with this. But just like an example, because I feel like all games do this, like a Santa Claus something. I feel like that they would be cool. They did do they did holiday winter. themed variants, yeah. They did a which winter one. had like Santa Claus hats and a Christmas tree in the background of like rock slide or whatever. Um, yeah, they they've done that. Um, I do think. I like to your point, I think a lot of people play Snap and don't watch. I actually just from like anecdotal, like in Vegas, when I was just talking to random people, like I was at like a poker table or and or like just walking around a casino or something. And I was talking to some people that were just there just like from gambling. And there were people that play Snap and just have never heard of Twitch. Like they're like they have Snap on their phone and they were like, yeah, I play. And they like I, they had someone else at the table had recognized me. And they were like, oh, you're Dara, you play Snap, whatever. And the other person, the dealer at the table was like, he was like, Snap. Like he did the like Snap thing and he had like known what Snap was. And he was just like, I don't watch Twitch at all. He's like, I don't even know what Twitch is. Like wow. they, there are a lot of people out there who just like don't watch social, like, like content for things and they just play the games. So it's just like, there are a lot of them out there. So if they know about Twitch drops somehow, I think if they pushed advertising better in the game, whatever said, there's Twitch drops available. Which there, it is on the main page on the PC client, but I don't know if it's really so apparent on the mobile client. I guess it does filter through on there as well, but yeah, um, yeah, a ton of people play and then just don't consume content for us. And I guess maybe it's a little, uh, a little first world problem or like greedy of us, but it, it does help the content creators a lot where it, like it, it pumps the numbers up because then we get more like, I guess ad sense or just growth in general um yeah and then what if, it, we'll want to keep playing snap more which helps snap so it's like a 
we're both helping each other in a way. Yeah, because we we get more viewership during the drops. But as you and I saw, I think for the last drops, these drops aren't over. But I saw a significant boost after the drops because a lot of people who hadn't seen my stream came in from the drops and then now they're watching snap in general so maybe they're watching my stream and other streams but uh i saw a pretty good big boost i think that's good for the game not just for the content creation side but maybe if everyone if they're more invested in like watching and playing and i like i do streams every single time like a new card comes out every time a new ota ha happens so it's like i'm kind of marketing and advertising a bit for the game itself even though like it's not like a paid promotion but uh it right. does help them, I think, keep the player base strong and healthy for that to happen. But, yeah. you know, I do get that benefit, like you said, for extra ad revenue. I don't know if you wanted to share. Do you do you care if you share? How much did you? I'm curious how much you made on, like, let's just say, like, the first. You did, like, a, almost a 24-hour stream, right? Like, what 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 was your ad revenue like? Do you, do you care sharing? Are you allowed to say? Uh, you go first. All right. Uh, I think I made... Let me see. I had this pulled up, but I think I made about uh, what was it over the over the two days? I had fifty five hundred ads and eleven 1, hundred ads. That's one stream, so about sixteen hundred for the one stream, which I think for I think it was like twenty three hours streamed or something like that, or twenty hours streamed. It looks like not too yeah. Bad. Yeah, that's pretty good. How long did I stream? Time streamed. I streamed almost 21 hours and I made 5,300. Which makes sense. That, yeah, that's like you had like three times my viewership, I think. So that's uh, it's not bad for one one day's work, but that's that's what Twitch drops can do. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's kind of crazy. Well, then I can buy gold and actually buy variants. Yeah, you spend way more on the game than I have. I think I've only spent probably like four point five thousand or something like that, like four point five k. And you, do you have any idea what you've spent at this point? I think we talked about it a little bit last time. Like I would have guessed at least eight thousand would be my guess. Like you spent I... a lot. I've lost track. It's basically if something's there that I want, I just buy the, I, I buy it and I just write it off. Hopefully I don't go to prison. I think I'm doing things right. Um, but it's like yeah. I, I, people, people like seeing the, the fancy variants or seeing the splits. They live kind of like vicariously through it. A lot of people have just said like, oh, you know, like buy the new card. I want to see what it looks like and, and split it. Like I can't get it myself, but I really want to see like the animation on it or something like that. They added um, that feature in the shop now, though, that you can look at it. Oh, oh wow. New that's a new one. Hey, that's nice. It's a nice variant. But yeah, you can now look at it now. So maybe it's less cool for people. No, no, stop. I'm going to keep getting them. Don't say that. <laughs> but they actually you can't do splits and stuff. So yeah, you can't so see like, like the gold backgrounds or whatever, but yeah. you can see it upgraded. But Wow, this is actually I might buy this. Uh there there is for anyone listening, there is a Nico variant that's in my shop that is super rare and Sister kind of Grim. Yeah, I might buy this on stream. Yeah, make later. sure you do it on stream. So yeah, I, I have off. to do all my buying, all my whaling on stream so that people uh can uh appreciate my whaling. <laughs> I spend a lot less money, I feel like, in the game now. Wait, I have two Nikos in my shop? Oh, a midnight. Wait a second. Oh, wow. Oh, and there's a really cool Wolf's Fade. Wow. All right. Uh, there's some cool stuff in my shop just, right now. But you know, you got all that AdSense. Just throw it all back into the game. That's, that's kind of what I'm doing. <laughs> that is true. But I, as going full-time, now that has to go towards my rent. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I still live in New York City. It's still very expensive to live here. I might move next year. We'll see. I don't know. You we'll should see how move it goes. to a uh, Vegas I thought about it. Actually, I had a really good time in Vegas. I, I don't know if you did uh, while you were there for a day, but, you know, I got to meet some people, meet, meet some uh, content creators, but also just like hang out with uh, Dexter, Binks. How was that? Nina was there. We got to hang out, just yeah. chilling. And Dexter, you know, got to oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> spend all his time doing his promotional stuff. Yeah, I was uh, very how, busy how was with, with, with ad work or, or sponsor work. I wasn't really planning on going. Um, and then I found out a couple days before they're like, yeah, get out here and 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 
do some promotions for Samsung and AT&T. And I was like, all right. So I actually filmed something that I'm working on. I handed it off to um, a fancy editor and we'll see when the video gets done. But I'm excited. It's kind of the it's it's IRL snap content. And I feel like not a no, no one's done it. I don't think. Except for maybe I Cozy mean, people, on the Street, but I guess that's yeah, not really IRL street, Snap. Oh. Yeah, people weren't playing Snap at all in that. They were just asking about Snap quiz stuff. But yeah, we'll I see. don't. We'll, we'll see how it does. It's basically, instead of you and me playing online, we're just standing in, in Vegas using the fantastic yeah. AT&T service. Hashtag ad. Great service. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I loved just being able to hang out with people, play some Snap in Vegas. But also, I don't know about you, do you play any, uh, actually, do you gamble at all? No, you kept trying to get me to gamble, and I'm like, I, I, I <laughs> no. My gambling I'm a is splitting a variant and hoping I get a good one. I've gambled in the past. I'm an old man. I've lost uh, money at, like, blackjack tables before. Um, so I'm like, yeah, I, I, think I'm, I think I'm done with that. I would rather, but you like... Love sit down and buy gambling. a drink um yeah but in in snap you love gambling you know well, you, you, you go for those splits you know you go for you, you go for the 50 up. 50s you're like okay you know my gambit just needs to hit yeah. this one and three and you're frothing at the mouth you're excited but i i don't yeah. think we uh i don't know i don't like gambling with with real money but what if you're winning did so, you win did you come out on top uh in poker i came out on top so i i played a lot of different table games but also poker but poker i think is very similar to snap in like the gameplay style and what you're doing and just very uh like statistical analysis kind of way of playing and it's a you kind of have to read how people are playing as well be like do they have it do they not kind of thing i think that's really fun and that's one of the reasons i'm drawn into snap and why i'm also drawn into hold'em so i played a lot of hold'em was there i probably played like you know how i like to just like grind out games i sat there for like a long time at one table and just like grinded it out i had i ended up like pumping a bit at the start uh but then i ended up on top at the end before i walked away so it happens but uh can you share i numbers? lost all my money Oh, and so, yeah, so <laughs> I, I'll share some numbers. Uh, at the poker table, I sat down at a 2-5 table, which is the blinds, and you the max buy-in you could buy in is for 1500 so it's prudent to buy in for the max buy-in because then you have the most to work with to be able to uh, double up with or, uh, I don't know, just like you don't get bullied out by some other people. So I would buy in for the max, and... I ended up uh, down about four thousand dollars at one point because I had lot. I had two really bad beats, and I uh, ended up all in on both of those bad beats. Which a bad beat is when someone has like a really good hand, and you have a really good hand, but their hand is just slightly better than yours. So <laughs> uh, I ended up just getting uh, wiped out twice. But and then I came back. So that's like and when you, you, you both nut hard, but they nutted harder. Exactly. Okay. Literally, literally that, yeah. And okay. that is poker terminology, you know? Yeah. But actually, <laughs> so we, uh, I, I eventually just did the exact opposite where I nutted harder and came back to win. So I, I ended up doubling up like two or three times and over the course of like a couple hours and won it all back that I had lost in poker because i i just like grinded it back out i think poker is a a little bit of a grindy game in that way when you're doing table games or uh cash games versus like tournament style you have to really just like stick to the solid fundamentals a lot of times and just like uh work your way back up so you then, came out even not on top with poker i was on i was on top with poker i was <laughs> up i think about like six seven hundred in the end oh, in poker God, i could but, that is so stressful is it it's not that stressful oh god i i feel like in poker as long the longer i play the more money i can make so i think poker is one that like i like playing a lot because i'm not playing against like ultra professionals at a two five table you get some people that are sharks in there that are like regulars that come to the casino every single day and they're like playing but then you get a couple of the people that are just like tourists coming to visit and you can kind of like 
see which are which and just like pick your opportunities i think there um but in blackjack and craps and roulette and all those games like they're all losing games like you just the more you play the more you'll lose because it's all just straight oh i'm a big expected value actually negative. i like you are yeah i enjoy it i think it's just the community <laughs> vibes of it yeah, it's very fun, especially if you get to throw the dice. I, a couple know. times I've I've crapped with my fiance, and it's really fun. Yeah, I I showed that to a few people. Nina won a couple games of that, so maybe she's addicted now. I I did that. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, but it was fun. I uh, I really liked it. I would. That's like so. I think I started talking about this because like talking about Vegas. I wouldn't mind moving to Vegas and just having like the accessibility to. The casinos to be able to play poker on the side as well like maybe be a full-time snapper and poker player who knows i think that'd be fun if only you could bring a camera in there but you can't huh i actually got a card to contact the director of operation of poker operations to be able to stream in there and they said maybe really even at a table yeah so supposedly they already have 20 people approved to record content and i think some of them are live content Oh, so, wow. That would be cool. Well, if you could do that, then definitely. Otherwise, I'd say that's it's a dangerous business. But I guess there are a lot of poker yeah. pros, right? Who they just play poker. Yeah. And yeah. I wouldn't necessarily be a poker pro, but I would be a professional content creator playing poker. You're just a professional card gamer. Yeah, exactly. That's what I told people at the table. And they were like, oh, what kind of card game? And then I have to go down the rabbit hole of, have you heard of Hearthstone? Have, have you heard, heard of, of Spider-Man? Like, and it always gets back to have you heard of like Magic the Gap? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's it's just like that's something that like everyone's heard of, you know? It's just like in a card game, like or I guess like Pokemon, but like people don't know of that as a card game, you know? They think of it as like a collectible thing. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. Wow, it'd be cool. You should do it. But also, you should know, I? if you your rent is astronomical, you could buy a house in Vegas, and it'd be cheaper than your rent. So uh, you're right. Your that mortgage would be like way less. Yeah, for sure. I would I could buy a mansion um for my one bedroom here. It's yeah. kind of crazy. But you know, I saw a little thing that said like the most affordable places to live or expensive places to live. And New York didn't even crack the top ten, I don't think, because uh just like the income and the, it, they were like dividing it by the income of the place. And it's, it's like click, New York it's clickbait. Has, like, Clickbait. Pretty high income. But yeah. You know what was at the top of the list? Not too. Oh, wait. Cut that out. Don't put that in there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I got that. It was actually San Diego. San Diego. Yeah. Because wow. they don't make as much as it costs to live there. It's just very expensive. And the things there are very expensive too. That makes sense. To like, I yeah. feel like a lot of California, the rent is really high, but the pay doesn't really match it. So. Yeah, Los Angeles is number two, I think, on the list, or number three. Yeah, um, I, just, I, I, I gotta get out of this area. Yeah, it's expensive, and you don't get paid that well. Yep, it sucks. But when you're working for yourself, you can get paid as much as you want. When you're yeah. making five k <laughs> per day, no, not really, but on special events, you know. Yeah, yeah, once, once every year, two months. Yeah, that's nice time. though. I. I don't mind that. I hope they do it more. That's that's what I'm taking away from this podcast. Is I hope, I hope we get it at least every other month. Is my hope. Yeah, I think that'd be good. Yeah. Just no more good, shocker good variants, kids. please. Yeah, please. At least please a play playable card. <laughs> yeah, angel or strong guy. Oh man, that's an uatu. Uatu. The next, <laughs> the next view. Oh man, it's actually not even like a bad variant of shocker. Like the variant that they're no. doing, it's just like. It's kind of cool, but it's just buff shocker. You never play make, that him, card. make him two four. Oh, maybe actually, you know, if they buff shocker, but actually, it's too late now. Trip drops are ending in like five days. They should have buffed it and then given it to everyone. That would have been good. Been yeah, yeah, yeah. So next one, they buff the card and then they do a twitch drop. Rework Punisher, make him uh, oh, old three, six. old Angela. No, new Angela. Make him a 2-2. Two, two. Anytime an opponent plays a card here, he gets plus one. And then give him a free oh. free variant. That would be an insane card. 
what did it actually be saying? Maybe one. Actually, that, I don't even know if that would be good. Um, It'd be, be like good. a 2-4 maybe on average. It's not bad. And it punishes bounce decks. It'd be like a bounce counter. Does it punish them? Bounce goes way bigger, but yeah. But we'll having see. a 2-4, I don't know. You can make them old Angela. A 2-0 that's plus 2 every time. That's better. Uh, that is kind of better. Maybe? Yeah. Maybe. We'll see. All right, well. I think that was a good pod. What do you, what, any, any final words here? Closing remarks. Um, no. Just none. Well, that's it. I just, I want to play more Spider Man 2. Go play Spider Man 2 if you have a PS5, not hashtag yeah. ad. You need to get ad- sponsored by them. Look, Actually, sh- that'd be a huge sponsorship. I, I wish. Insomniac didn't even give me early access. I don't, I was really hoping they would. Do they um, give anyone early access? I yeah, guess they give some a, media people. They give a lot of people early access. Like a lot of streamers. Like creators? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. But Damn, you're just not big enough. No. <laughs> I, I suck. But look at I'm showing my 19 inches on my camera right now. Um, this Damn. is huge. This is really cool. I don't I don't know what we're looking at, but oh man. <laughs> wow. That's nice, isn't it? Is it a cat? I actually don't know. No, no, it's a it's a Venom statue. Oh, it's a Venom statue. Okay, it came I, with the yeah, collector's yeah. edition. That thing is substantial. Wow. You could uh, you could use it as a weapon for sure. That's home security, I think. Oh man, that that uh, that'd be kind of insane. Uh, <laughs> Venom. I actually never get the collector's edition stuff. Should Me I? neither. I sprung for it this time, and uh, I have no idea what to do with this thing. Yeah, that's, so maybe that's never one of my again. problems. Are you a nostalgic person? Do you like look back at your like, I don't know, Hearthstone things that they gave you and be like, oh, oh, I look cool back stuff. at them and I donate them. Yeah, so you get rid of them. You're so you're not a nostalgic person in that way. No, there's too much stuff. That's I am, my problem. I already yeah. have so much. St- you could see there's a mess in my my background. It's because these are all like boxes of of stuff, like Hearthstone stuff or like old tech. I'm like, what do I even do with this? Yeah, I I literally have started purging, getting rid of all my old nostalgic things because just too much. I even got rid of all my. Oh wait, maybe I shouldn't say this on the pod. Uh, if you're listening, I I got rid of my my old uh, Blizzard like swag, like employee gifts, and maybe a few things that were given to me. Don't <laughs> <laughs> don't hate. There's me. there's like uh, a community trash room over here, and I yeah. always see so much old Blizzard stuff just sitting on the floor. <laughs> It's yeah. like all the employees are like, I got so much shit. What do I do with this? I literally have the smallest apartment and you guys have given me so much. Oh, too much. It, it, literally, they, Blizzard is all about swag, like giving, giving swag out. So I, I got a rumble. It, it, instead of pay, they give you <laughs> swag. I got a rumble bucket hat. They love bucket hats. I don't know why. Oh, do you want this cut? No, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, all right. Well, thanks, uh, thanks everyone for watching the pod. We'll uh, see you guys next week, right? Uh, yeah. Hopefully. I don't know what cards coming out after. I haven't paid attention to which one's next, but you know, come back for that. And it'll, you know, it'll be fun. I'm sure. It'll be the best. All right. Thanks. See you guys. Bye. See ya.